Local Live, I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. A couple quick updates. First, I want to thank Josh Short from the Wilbury Theater, uh, who joined us earlier today to talk about uh, 401 Gives, the United Way initiative, and how incredibly important that is to nonprofits across Rhode Island. If you've got a few extra dollars, want to share some of your stimulus money, uh, it's the opportunity to help those organizations that are so central to Rhode Island that really need uh, help. So please, please consider a donation to them. Also, we'll have Dr. Michael Fine on at 1.30 to sort of break down what President Biden said last night. What does this May 1st deadline mean? And will we really all be able to get together for the 4th of July? We'll talk about that as well. But let's go to Balzano, Italy with Rebecca Cotto da Silva. Uh, we appreciate her checking in with us all the time. And, and Italy has proven to be about four to six weeks ahead of each of the spikes here in the United States, almost mirror each other as those trends go along. And Italy is in a very, very significant spike. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, talk about the situation there. It's Friday early evening, uh, or uh, yeah, almost early evening. Yeah. Uh, you've got more restrictions and you've got cases going through the roof. We do, and it's surprising. On the one hand, you look and you see, okay, they're testing so many people. So it's, you know, it might be one of those things where the rate the rate is, is not that high, but then um, the hospitals are full, right? The parts of the hospitals dedicated to COVID patients are full. So um, not everywhere, but in a lot of places, they're very close to capacity or at capacity. And, and that's, um, you know, I think that's probably maybe the most important index, right? But um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're locked down. Italy hasn't been as locked down as us, but it's not necessarily that our numbers are that much better. In your region? In my region, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, talk about the new restrictions. They just came out, what, in the last hour? Um, I, so far, I haven't seen anything definite, but um, you know, according to the EU, this has been a deep red zone and most of Italy has been pretty red, I think. And um, uh, I believe the EU put a couple more Italian regions in red zones. Italy is is looking at uh, the whole country being a red zone, you know. And I'm getting this from other media, just um, just to be clear, because I don't have any necessarily primary information on any of this. So I'm getting this from the Italian and German language stuff, and 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 bringing it to you um, in terms of the zones and everything. But yeah, so it looks like there'll be more restrictions. They're looking at restricting weekend activity, uh, especially with Easter coming up and nice weather. I think they want to make it clear that it's still dangerous to be out on the weekend. I do believe Italy's been pretty effective in a vaccination campaign in terms of the vaccinations that we've been given because we are working uh, within the EU framework for that. So um, yeah, it's, for us, especially here, I mean, I think we've been locked down for a month now in terms of an 8 p.m. curfew. Um, nothing's open except unless it's essential. No restaurants, only takeout after 8 p.m. It has to be delivery, that type of thing. No oh, bars Rebecca, even. No, and no bars. And in Italy, like that's coffee tough bar. Going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, no coffee. Re Rebecca, you, you've been fully vaccinated now. Talk about that experience. Which vaccine were you given? And are you now 14 days after your second shot so that you're fully believed to be fully immune? Well, I'm actually, I'll be, I'll get my second shot in at the end of May because it was the AstraZeneca and they found that a 90 day effectiveness is, or 90 day gap is the most effective. So I'm gonna have an 80 day gap. Although a lot I, of- I, I just, I just wanna note, mm -hmm. AstraZeneca is not available in the United States. Presently, uh, the FDA has approved Johnson & Johnson, uh, Pfizer, and Moderna on emergency youth authorizations. Uh, AstraZeneca has not received approval. I apologize for, for interrupting. Sure, sure. Um, so I, but as someone who's been ill and then vaccinated 83 days later, um, you could also consider me fully vaccinated in that sense, and some places do, although they do have a 90-day cutoff, so <laughs> I was a week early 
to the vaccination. But um, but in terms of being vaccinated roughly three months after being ill, I'm in that category. I will probably get the second dose unless um, they change the rules. Uh, but it's, it's likely that um, I wouldn't necessarily need it. But whatever they tell me to do, I'll, I'll make sure and do it. Although it is all voluntary here, whatever they recommend, I'll do it. The AstraZeneca vaccine was very difficult. Um, and you've probably seen that a lot of countries have identified a batch and that they're not using that batch anymore. So um, and there's been a bit of panic now. They About 5% of the um, appointments were canceled here. So they're, um, you know, hopefully it's not a huge hiccup in uh, getting everybody back out, <laughs> but we'll see. How did you feel after the vaccination? So, you know, the AstraZeneca, what's, what's said is because it's, um, it's more of an old school type of vaccination with pieces of, of proteins and other, other things to sort of make you feel the same illness that you would feel with um, COVID. And I felt worse than I did in December by far. The first night was quite pleasant for me, um, which for most people it wasn't. I felt kind of drunk. Um, but then I had sort of speaking problems the next day. I would go for a word and I couldn't find it. I had problems where I would like, I'm looking at my keyboard now, sorry. I would go to type D and I would type K instead. It's very strange, like, I don't know, very strange problems in that sense. And it just felt like very fluey. My arm hurt like someone beat it with a hammer. Like I, I would think that it would be purple bruised and it wasn't and I was like how is it possible to have so much invisible pain um and uh and it was pretty tough it was a couple days of of not feeling well and of course you know I did have an, I was sick in in August when when testing was harder to come by then I was sick again in December and I had this now so now I've had the full spectrum I think of of symptoms at least according to the doctors at AstraZeneca <laughs> Well, look at you, three illnesses in less than a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what's, you know, you've, you've been in lockdown. We've, uh, it may have potentially made a terrible mistake here. Governor Raimondo going out the door as she moved on to Secretary of Commerce, loosened up restrictions. Governor McKee came in, he loosened up restrictions. Cases just look like they might be going up again. It could be a problem. U.S. seems to mirror Italy four to six weeks behind. Um, you've been locked down for a month. Um, you're getting tighter restrictions now. What's the general tenor of the Italian people at just all these limitations? Now you're going on your second full year of limitations. Uh, off and on, over this period of time, you, you started at last February, February 20. You went all the way through to April. Now we're in mid-March, you're a month in. Does it just seem like it's endless? It does. Oh, we may have a visitor here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it feels pretty endless. Here is hard because we've had all these restrictions and it seems to be, and I hope I'm not misrepresenting anything here, but it seems to be quite steady here. So the restrictions aren't necessarily making things go down or making things better. It feels like they're sort of maintaining. Whereas, um, I think they prefer to see your face, Gaia. <laughs> <laughs> so, whereas, you know, where in other parts of Italy, you're seeing growth where there weren't the restrictions. So, it's, it's tough. And then, again, in other parts of Italy, it's going to be uncomfortably hot inside soon. Whereas here, it's, it's a little different. But I, you know, you get the sense walking around that people are very tired of being locked in, especially, you know, now people who have had any type of vaccination, which is tough, it's tough to go through. It's like, oh my gosh, I just did, you know, I really took one for the team in a sense. And um, I, I think it's, it's tough. And then when you say something like the hospitals are full, it's like, well, why didn't we work on better facilities last summer? What, what was everyone doing last summer? So I think that it's, it's a tough sell, and we'll see how things go. Hopefully, um, 
the ability to do more things outside will, um, or the, the ability to be outside more, hopefully we'd be allowed to do that uh, because of the weather, it's, it's more open. Maybe we'd be allowed to, to just be outside more, but who knows? I think it's gonna be tough, especially as the weather gets better. Do you think the spike is tied to, there's certainly enough uh, written about it that it's tied to the variants and that while the cases initially weren't that high, that just there's so much more contagious and also believed to be more impactful that A, people are staying, uh, getting more infected quicker and, and secondly, that they're staying in the hospitals longer because of the variants and the impact of the variants. Yeah, what I've read, um, the, the articles that I've read have suggested that this is due to the increased contagiousness of the variants. We've had, we've identified UK and South African here in this province. I believe all three of the sort of famous variants, UK, South African, and Brazilian in the country of Italy. So I, I do believe that people are, are identifying the variants as the, the issue. Uh, in terms of disinfection, you know, like we're we're locked down and it's very steady. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> and um, so it's it's either that there are variants, even undetected ones, um, or uh, there's just socializing happening that <laughs> we're not aware of. But I mean, even, even the masks now, it used to be wear your own mask, wear a surgical mask, and now it's like if you're in a small space, you're putting on an FFP2 mask, N95. This yeah. isn't, you know, it's it's not easier or more laissez-faire than before. But again, people are tired of it. So, you know, on a bus with about seven or eight people, you might see someone rip off their mask and sort of look around at everyone like, what are you going to do? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, I want to thank you so much. It's been incredibly helpful for the past, I think it's almost a year that we've been checking in with you almost every single week. And uh, your insights are incredibly value and almost prophetic as to what we can expect. Hopefully, we won't follow Italy this time, but history shows us we generally do. About four weeks from now, uh, we could see a substantial increase in the number of cases here in Rhode Island. And we have not gotten our cases down very far here. Uh, three to four hundred cases every day. Uh, Rebecca, have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, in, enjoy it as best you possibly can. And for everybody else, stay tuned. We'll have Dr. Michael Fine on at 1.30. He'll discuss what President Biden said last night and what the impact is for all of us in Rhode Island. Uh, everybody stay safe and please, please wear your mask.